I work with solopreneurs and small business marketers and so many of them want to create more video, but they don't necessarily know how and there are so many options out there. When I say options, platforms that help you make videos, things like that. So in this video today, what I have done is taken my three favorite video platforms and we're going to go through them, do an in-depth comparison and hopefully find a platform that uh, maybe you can find helpful. Hey everyone, Ross Herosian here. I am a marketing coach and I have my own company, Tricycle Creative. Would love it if you checked that out. I help solopreneurs and small business marketers create marketing plans, content plans, uh, and in the case of this video, help them make videos. So I just wanna start off by saying, if you find any part of this video helpful, or if you decide, yes, I'm gonna go with that particular platform, I ask you, please use the links below in the description. I am not being compensated by any of the three companies, by Ecamm, Riverside, or StreamYard. However, if you use those affiliate links below, they throw me a couple shekels. And that really helps to support this channel and the videos that I make. In this video, I am going to be comparing three of, again, my favorite video live streaming platforms. We have StreamYard, we have Ecamm, and we have Riverside. I've personally used all three of these, and in fact, I personally use all three of them even now. So they are three really great, really stable platforms. By no means does that mean they're the only ones but I think they are some of the best platforms. If you are looking to kind of upgrade your video capabilities for your small business. Now I'm going to be walking you through each one of these platforms in six different categories. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can skip directly to the specific categories by hitting the chapter markers down below on the player. You can skip around if you like. Of course, I'd love to have you here for the whole ride. And then at the end, I'm going to compare them all on a scorecard. So without further ado, let's do it. So the first category we're gonna be looking at is interface. Now, let me just kind of define this really quickly of what I'm thinking when I'm talking about this interface category. This is like, okay, you, you sign up, you log in, you download, whatever, and you jump into the platform for the first time. What does the user interface, what does it look like? How, uh, I would even say user friendly is it? How intuitive is it? And even like how complicated or intimidating is it? So that's what we're going to look at together in the interface category. So the first interface we are looking at here is Ecamm Live. And uh, I, I actually just removed my camera just to, well, we'll add it back in here to show you. So this is Ecamm Live and there is a lot going on here. Now we're going to get into some of the details of all of this on screen um, in the controls and features uh, category, which is the next category. You can skip to it if you like along the bottom here on YouTube. Um, but there's a lot going on in here. And the one thing when we're talking about just interface to start is, you know, how kind of easy is it for you to just jump right in and get started? And this is very involved. And I think also this could be incredibly intimidating. This is also taking up an entire one of my monitors. So there is a lot going on, as you see, inside of this Ecamm interface. We'll dig into it a little bit more in that next controls and features section. So now we're taking a look at the Riverside platform. And the way that Riverside sets up when you create your account, you log in, is you create these studios. And you can look at studios a number of different ways. They can kind of be workspaces. They could also be if you have a number of different shows. Um, you can have a separate studio for each show, um, which is helpful because it gathers your recordings in one place. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But this is the where you start 
as someone who has an account. Uh, so I'm gonna go into my tripod, which is the Tricycle Creative Podcast. Uh, if you haven't subscribed or check it out, I would love for you to do that. I'll put a link below in the description. Love for you to check that out. It's full of digital marketing and business growth um, content, interviews, all kinds of great stuff. Okay, so this is when I'm coming into the studio, I'm presented with this uh, page. Uh, I don't know if they properly call it a green room, but this is very commonly kind of called that. So I can say, okay, yeah, I am. It's fine. Ignore that. I can set my microphone. I can set my camera and I can set my output. So for this, I'm just going to leave it as my microphone, which I have no output on. So I don't get an echo. Um, and I'm joining as a host. We'll talk a little bit in the, in the controls and features section about this producer function, which is super cool. Um, I'm just going to join studio. Okay, so this is Riverside. So here I am as the host, and then when my guest joins, they would pop up over here. Um, and it's very streamlined and simple, right, as compared to what we just saw in Ecamm with all of the, the windows and the modules and stuff. It's like, okay, here's me, here's the guest, hit record, get going. And then my individual controls are at the bottom. So if I you know, need to change my microphone or my camera or my output speaker. You can share your screen um, and, and that's pretty much it. Now there is a media tab over here. We'll talk about that a little bit. And again, the controls and features section. This is just that first cursory look. When you first jump in, how intimidating or easy is it? And Riverside, it, it's super simple, straightforward, not intimidating. You hit record, you start going, you stop recording and then you leave. It's, it's that simple. Now you'll notice here inside of StreamYard that it is set up very similarly to the Riverside platform in that they organize things by broadcast and a broadcast can be individual shows. Uh, you can also create a recurring one, but a lot of times it makes a lot of sense just to have them for each show you have a broadcast. Um, okay, so we're gonna come over here and we're gonna enter this studio. All right, so again, this is kind of like that green room setting, if you will, the same thing that your um, invited guests would have, mute, stop cam, your actual settings right here, so audio, you can set up a virtual background. Again, this is more of a features thing, so we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, display name, uh, enter studio. Now, just talking about interface, when you jump in here, this is incredibly clean. Now, there's more here, than on Riverside. A little bit more about, uh, we'll get into that with the controls and features. Again, we're just talking about starting out, jumping in, how intimidating is this? And you come down here, you add yourself to stream, boom, there you go. Now when, uh, or if you have a guest, these buttons right here control the different views with your guests. So really simply you have, you can set up a split screen, you can set up split screen with you know, where you're in kind of an HD 16.9, um, um, uh, right, where you're inside the frame. This is for multiple people, you know, you can set three people with a big speaker and two other guests, blah, blah, blah. like, so just out of the box, you get a bunch of different views. And then additionally, over here on the right side are um, additional features that you can take advantage of, but they're very easy to get to, right? Again, looking at our first example of Ecamm, there's a lot of windows and a lot of things, and these are kind of turnkey, if you will, right? So I can go ahead and add this in, right? So these are turnkey, really easy to use. Dig into these more in the features section, but right out of the box when you're looking at this interface, you're like, oh, okay, it is simple. There's a lot here, but it's not intimidating, right? It's not overwhelming. So the second category in this comparison is ease of use. Now, I'm not gonna jump into each individual one. This is one of those categories where quite simply, I can kind of give you uh, my take. And for what it's worth, I think that StreamYard is the easiest to use. And we're gonna learn a little bit more about that. I'm gonna show you that as we get into the controls and features pieces and all the rest of this video. But for all of the, the tools it gives you, combined with how simple those tools are, for me, 
StreamYard is the easiest to use. For all three of these platforms, you kind of got a sneak peek in that last section where we're talking about interface into the controls and the features. But in this section, what I want to do is take a little bit of a deeper dive. Now, this is not going to be exhaustive. Please understand, I'm not going to go through every single feature, functionality, control inside of each of the three platforms. But at a high level, I can jump around and show you some of the things that are different, some of the things that are unique, some of the things that I think are helpful. Um, so that's what I'm going to do here in this category of controls and features. So once again, we are going to start with Ecamm Live. And this, remember, at the end of this video, I'm going to have a uh, like a rundown, like a scorecard, if you will, for all three of these platforms. But I'm just going to tell you right now, Ecamm Live has the absolute most controls, features, customizable functionality, but it does come with a learning curve. It's not always steep, but it is more than the other two platforms. So I'm going to take you through some of the windows that you see right here on screen uh, to start. So you have scenes. So scenes are um, uh, just that, like a movie. So let's say I have, that right now it's just me. Uh, on screen here, but I have other screens such as something, you know, like this, which could be an intro screen. I have like a starting soon screen for some of my webinars that I do. Um, you know, I can have screen shares. I can have a, you know, uh, a be right back screen right here. So, you know, I can also have obviously a split screen with guests. I can have I can completely customize how I want it to look, but I have to build it. That's the thing, okay? So if I want a full split screen, I can do that. If I want me big and my guest small and my guest big and me small and then a split screen and then a shared screen and then a, what, you can do, it's, it's really the options, the possibilities are limitless. But the problem is you have to build it. It's not readily available in like a turnkey type way. So then you look at overlays and overlays, if any of you are familiar with like a Photoshop, that things are built in layers, that's kind of how overlays work. And you can set overlays specifically to each individual scene. So an overlay, for example, I'll show you something like this, right? So I have a three minute countdown timer. I can get that going here and that would show up in my broadcast, which actually you see down here, we're jumping ahead a little, but my live preview down at the bottom here, which shows exactly what's going out to the feed. Um, so that's useful, um, particularly if you wanna tee up things, you can set this up in a number of different ways, but I can see exactly what the broadcast looks like down here. Now, for the most part, it's one-to-one, -one, but you can set it up in a different way. But again, I'm not gonna get into all the details of that. Um, um, I can also have things like, uh, let's see what we got here. I think there's going to be an, an open, yeah. So I can set up these types of little transitions or opens or things like that. You can do all of this inside of Ecamm Live. It's so incredibly powerful. Um, and like I said, your overlays can be set specifically to each scene. So if you only want things to be available or to show up in like, oh, when we're split screen, you can set it up that way. Or you can set it up that like a lower third is available in any and all scenes. And like, I'll even show you real quick. So you have a number of different options. You can bring in an image overlay, an animated, you can do a screen share. Like I'll do a text overlay, like this is a text overlay. Let me bring it in here. So I was doing it on my other screen. There we go. And I have it set up already with my formatting that I like, and I can do like, let's do fly in from left and let's add it to this scene. Boom. And I can move the positioning, right? So, and the way that you fire it or not fire it is with the eyeball here. So if I want to take it away, I do that. If I want to fire it again, Boom, this is a text overlay. So you see that while it is 
I would say it's not overly difficult. There is a learning curve. It's not like not necessarily intuitive. There are also sound effects. You can load in your own. It has some in here by default. You also have your in your sound levels and inputs right here, uh, which is good to keep an eye on. You know, make sure your guest is coming through. You can make sure the levels are all good. You can you can add adjustments to them. Again, I talked about the program right here. And then this is something that is very unique to Ecamm in that you have very extensive camera effects. So you can add a green screen, you can add zooms and pans, you can actually alter your video. So if I wanna take my video up super bright, bring that back down to where it was. Um, if you wanna set the temperature, your tint, your saturation, your gamma, uh, use a LUT, which I am using a LUT. Um, I'll put a link uh, below and probably up here about how to create that if you're interested. A LUT is like a, a color profile type thing. So um, you'll, so if I take it down here, you'll see I usually am a little less intense. So I go there, I get a little more richness. I love a good richness. Um, you can mirror, you can go black and white just with the click of a button. So you see when it comes to controls and interfaces, just like what's available here. And I haven't even really scratched the surface. There is a ton here inside of Ecamm Live. Inside Riverside, um, not a lot of uh, controls and features, right? Now, this might not be a terrible thing. I keep saying that, like, if you are looking to easily create content and you create a tool or you go with a tool that's overly complicated, you're putting like this obstacle in your way that you don't need to. The fastest path to production is what you want to look at. So just because I say this doesn't have as many features or controls, that's not necessarily a bad thing. And remember, at the end of this video, I'm going to do that full kind of scorecard, uh, kind of ranking them all fully against each other. Um, so, so if you want to, if you want to jump just to that, uh, you can, but I recommend you stick along for the ride. Okay. Now, when we're looking at this and our controls, again, you have record. So when you're ready, you hit record, you have your own, um, multimedia settings. So your camera, your, your microphone, your own external speaker, you can share a screen. Um, the only weird thing is, is that it kind of records your screen share as like a separate file. So post-production with some of your screen sharing might be a little um, arduous, right? Um, but it's there, it's available, you can certainly use it. Um, and then we have really the the biggie here, which is your your their big feature, which is the media. And what you can do here is this is essentially like your audio that you can fire off during the show. So this is sound effects, but it could also be your um, intro to your show if you want to do that live. But you see here, you know, clapping, laughing, a transition. So going from one topic to the next live, you could do that. You could hit that transition button. It could be like, whoosh, or in my case with my podcast, I use the bicycle bell or, um, you know, you can, you can import your own. It also by default gives you some little, you know, default sound effects that you can use. You also have a chat here. Um, this can be useful, um, with, uh, chatting with your guest. But the other thing that I had talked about is this producer function. There is a really cool feature in Riverside that you can give someone producer access to a studio. So what does that mean? What it means is, is that this person would run the, be the producer for your show. They have all access to the controls. Whereas you and the guest can just focus on the conversation and the producer can chat at individually. Hey, we're gonna go into this next, I'm gonna do this. As a former radio guy, I get this role, it's useful. But for many of you out there, you, you may or may not have someone that you're either gonna pay or not pay to function as your producer. But it is a really cool feature because if you don't want to be uh, you know, overly focused 
on producing the show and you just want to be focused on being in the show. That's a great feature to have. I also say Riverside makes it very easy by not giving you a lot of those bells and whistles for you just to focus on the conversation and your guests. And at the end of the day, that's a very valuable thing, whether it's video or audio, it's incredibly valuable. So again, while Riverside may not have a ton of these, you know, features, if you will, um, it still can be very useful to you. Now to show you the features and functions for StreamYard, I've gone ahead and connected my cell phone, which is behind me, and I'm going to bring that in just so I can show you what these, again, features and functions do. So again, I can go, oh, this is me solo. There we go. That's a split screen. So now I'm not sharing my screen in this. So if I were sharing my screen, that's how it would work out. Same here. But you'll notice just like right out of the gate, I can just boom, 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 boom. And as I mentioned, it does have really cool, easy out of the box ability to add lower thirds. Okay, so for example here, I'm gonna add this. Oh, look at that, okay. And if I wanted to create a new one, I would do, hello, this is a lower third. They're easy to create on the fly, okay? And then I create this. So this is that blending between you being a host and a producer. StreamYard, I think, really blends that really nicely in very simple tools to use. You also can affect your brand in here. So let's say I wanted to change my lower third to be more like this or this or more of a block, right? It gives you these four options. Now, you cannot make your own. So this is where there's a limitation there, but it is incredibly powerful. Now, I can't change the logo because I am on a free account, but you can change your logo in the top right corner. You can add a different overlay. So like, you know, you could do this. Yeah, see, I, I'm, I'm on the free account, so it won't let me do that. But you can add, you know, these overlays. You can create your own here too, so you can upload them. Um, not gonna get into how you do that, but you can do that in Photoshop, have a transparent layer, you know, bring it in, um, gonna hide that. You can also bring in your own little video clips. So I could, so this might look familiar, this is my YouTube open, but I could do this inside of StreamYard, okay? And if we go back to my solo here, because these are all these brand options, uh, my, here we go, let's do my background, if I do this, here we go. You notice my background is these leaves. Oh, of course, I can't do it, because. but you can change it. You can make it whatever it is you want. Again, if you upgrade, for the sake of this video, because I, I currently am not using StreamYard, that's not a value judgment, don't, we're gonna talk about it at the end, the full report card, so. Um, but you can totally make your own and upload it there. Um, and they've added this new feature of you can have background music going. So this is very feature rich. Comments, just so you know, this is designed, you can just record. You can also go live, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But this is where your comments would come in and then you have a private chat. This is between you and your guests on here. So StreamYard, very robust. Again, I feel like they're very easy to use right out of the box. And um, so it, it, it's, it's incredibly useful, not that intimidating, and still like incredibly feature rich. <laughs> files. And what I mean by that is how, what files can you get from each one of these respective platforms? So as I've shown you, all of them um, are, uh, they record video and audio. Um, so I don't need to jump into each one. I'm just gonna break down because they're very similar, uh, to be honest with you, um, the files you can get. So with Ecamm Live, all of your audio channels are separated. So that could be your host, your guest, um, even your sound effects channel. If you're if you play through your um, like computer monitor, if you're sharing that, all of that would be separate channels. 
um, that can be really helpful in post-production, having them all split out. Now, the only downside, I guess you could say, of Ecamm, though, is that it does not separate your video files. You get a combined video file. It also records locally. So it records to your actual computer. So when you're done, you hit stop, and then it pops up in whichever folder that you have indicated. Now with Riverside, uh, you get separate channels for both audio and video. So that's really convenient, super helpful, again, in that post-production. You can then combine your video into a full recording. So um, yes, you'll get separate channels, but then you can go in and say, okay, combine these two, and it and you combine it into one long form or one video. It records to the cloud. So I would recommend that you have a stable internet connection. In fact, I am hardwired into my fiber um, so that I have just really good connectivity. Um, obviously, totally depends on your provider, but that's what I do. I do not rely on Wi-Fi when I do any sort of live streaming or anything like that. Um, I am hardwired in with a really long cable, um, and that's a good thing. Now, I did say I wasn't going to jump into the platforms, but there is actually something I do want to show you in Riverside as it relates to files, which is unique, and I think I want to bring to your attention. It's actually super cool. So in Riverside, if we take a step back here, and we go to, uh, again, we'll go to tripod. And we'll go to, oh, wait, these are archived. I'll go back to one, uh, here we go. Okay, go in here. It creates some really neat out of the box um, content, right? So you can download this little graphic, right? Which is great to share. Don't judge me that I'm wearing a tank top here. This is personal. This is a, this is a personal podcast for my son. So, um, but you can also do this. Uh, let's see here. We're going to do, uh, sorry, give me a second here. If we come down here, we've created the full. Oh, wait, I can show you here. Clips. Here we go. Okay, so they've tweaked this a little bit. Sorry, let me go back here. Start editing. Okay, here we go. Found it. Sorry about that. Sometimes you can click around. All right, and I can choose a nine by sixteen, a one on one post. So this is that. It shows you this is a vertical. This is a square. This is a sixteen nine. So I'm just going to do this the nine sixteen because I want to show you intuitively it stacks you and your guest like i love this feature this makes it so easy to make social content so i'm just going to come in here and let's say this is the 45 seconds i want to grab um i can always tweak the size again oh once i make this you can export different versions the layout so this is a little bit more if you want to do some of these other ones, but like, okay, that's all me. That's not good. I want to do this. Yeah. I like this one, the background. So you can change the color or the pattern so you can upload your own also. And then you can export. I'm bringing this up because this is incredibly unique just to Riverside where once the file's made, the platform itself gives you these really great tools to have content for your social. So let's not lose sight of that. I think it's a huge feather in the cap for Riverside. Now finally with StreamYard, going through their file handling, um, it records to the cloud. It gives you full combined video. So the video is combined, you don't get separate channels. Um, but you can get the separated audio with an upgrade. Now, uh, these, we're gonna talk about the cost structure as one of the categories. So if you do wanna to skip to it, you can do that on YouTube to the cost section. Um, I'm gonna go through it because, you know, 
I'm try I wanted to compare these to apples to apples, but it's difficult because they have different pricing tiers and things like that. So whenever you watch this, these businesses, these platforms, they may add functions or change things, but I, I wanted to come at this as holistically as I can to be like, okay, here are the things that are included in base packages that, um, that are, should be accessible to you. But we'll break that down in the cost section, again, the cost category, um, a little bit later in this video. So the fifth category is functionality, and this is the easiest one I'm gonna do. Every single one of these can record and stream. Every single one of these systems, Ecamm, StreamYard, Riverside, they have tools that let you just record what you're, you know, your interview or what you're doing, or stream it live, do some live streaming with it. So in that way, they are all equal. So the final comparison category is price and cost of the platforms. And as I mentioned in the last category or two categories ago, I tried to create this video to kind of be as comprehensive as possible, but how and where these companies move their features could change over time. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. They may certainly add functions. They may move functions around. Um, but I think for the most part, these have kept pretty stable in the last couple of years, pricing features wise. In fact, I would say that many of these platforms have been increasing features and adding them into existing packages because so many people are using video and doing live streaming and recording, uh, you know, podcasts and things like that. So um, with that, we're going to take a look at each of the three platforms pricing models. So first up, we have Ecamm. And Ecamm gives you a trial. Now, this is something important to note. Ecamm is a software. So they are not web-based like Riverside and um, uh, StreamYard. So it is software-based. That could be a good for you. That could be a selling point for you. Could not be, right? But you can get a trial for 14 days. And we're going to look at all of them in a monthly uh, basis just again so we at least to some extent do apples to apples um, so this uh, you get a discount first month but you're looking at $20 a month for their standard package um, which for many of you out there if you're looking to just get started this is everything you will need okay now the next level up on the pro level adds in things and we're looking at then you double up again I'm, I'm disregarding that discount for now um, I'm sure whenever you go in here maybe you can be able to get a discount or find a discount but looking at the full cost $40 a month you get everything in standard plus you can bring in the live interview um, they have a just a great interview um, feature. I didn't cover it in there because um, I didn't want this video to be hours long, but you can bring in a guest and they can actually see your screen. They can see your, like it, it's very cool. So you get that added in. You also, this could be something that is a biggie for some of you out there, virtual mic and webcam. So what this is, is it allows you to use Ecamm as your virtual mic or webcam. What, is, what does that mean, Ross? You just repeated what the words say. Well, let me tell you, it means you can fire up Ecamm. You can use, you can then say, okay, use it as my virtual webcam. And then you can essentially use your settings, what you're doing in here, in other platforms like Google Meet or Zoom or whatever. So like all of the bells and whistles you get in Ecamm, you can kind of just port it over into any other platform, any other like, like screen share, meeting platform, that kind of thing. So. That's really cool. Um, wh whether that's worth another 20 bucks to you, plus all these other things, that that's gonna be a decision you have to make. Um, 4K streaming, um, you know, some extra widget overlays. You get overlays in this, ca in this uh, what I showed you is in this uh, package, okay? Uh, but this is just more of like advanced widget overlays. Um, you can do a little bit more with your audio. So, you know, and then you can also do, you know, bandwidth stats and some VIP tech support. So this really is, I think, for that level, that prosumer who maybe you've done 
or are doing existing live streams, but you want to take it to the next level, this pro package it, it could ap appeal to you. If you are just looking to get started, I think you'll have everything you need and there's going to be a learning curve for here for, you know, start with a trial, but then bump into the standard. Okay. So we looked at again, $20 a month for the standard for Ecamm. Okay. If we jump over to Riverside, it's comparable. You have a free and all of these, they tier it, you know, like you're going to have to figure out which one exactly is right for you, but they have a free, a free version here. Um, you know, but then your standard. So if we're going to kind of compare apples to apples, this $20, okay. Unlimited, you can separate tracks. You have no watermark. You can do up to 4k video screen sharing. You can live stream and then you have producer mode access. That's like everything that, um, I went through on this video. Okay. This again, you have some extra things. You get more time. You, how you get more time and really it just looks like you get the ability to have live call-ins and unlimited transcriptions. So whether or not that's worth another 10 bucks a month to you, um, again, a decision you'll have to make. But for the most part, we're looking at a $20 a month package, right? Um, okay, then we jump over to StreamYard and you have a free version where, you know, all of these, usually when you go with the free version, they're gonna stick their logo, their watermark, their brand on it, and you can't get rid of it. Um, that's pretty common. Their basic is 25 a month. So interestingly enough, it's a more than uh, Riverside standard and more than Ecamm standard. But I actually think it's kind of appropriately priced to be honest with you, because when we look at the tools you get right out of the box, if you're looking for that turnkey solution, um, I think StreamYard does a really good job of delivering on that. Um, you can bring in your 10 on screen, you get your own logo, whatever you want to design, your own overlays, your own backgrounds. You can record um, up to six hours per stream. You can multi-stream. So you can actually send the stream out to multiple locations. A lot of these offer that, um, but I think candidly StreamYard does it the best. Um, and then just like with the other ones, that professional. Now the professional is, much higher than the other ones 29 and this one's 40 a month this one's 50 a month almost 49 a month um you know I, I just feel like if you're getting into this area it might be time for you to look at ecamm but if you're if this is really just about you need more hours um and a little bit more production options for post-production then this is a viable option for sure you know, because you will get the, this is where you have to upgrade to get the individual audio recordings. Otherwise they're all combined into one file in this package. So, um, so a lot of, they're tightly knit. Um, you know, StreamYard starts to distance itself a little bit on the high end. Um, but uh, again, at the end of the day, I'm not here to say um, that, you know, this is the right one for you. I just want to present to you the platforms themselves in kind of their purest form so that you can make the right decision for your production. So I've taken you through all six of these categories. So now let's look at them in kind of a final scorecard rundown. And, you know, I suppose name a winner here. Um, I mean, I, these are all great platforms, but let's go through the points and uh, suss it out. Okay, interface. For that one, I give the point to Riverside.fm. Now, Riverside, again, not a lot there, but it's super easy to navigate and figure out. And as I talked about, you can just focus on being a host or content creator. Ease of use. That one I give to StreamYard. StreamYard, incredibly easy to use very turnkey, fantastic. When it comes to controls and features, you are not gonna beat Ecamm. Ecamm has all the bells, all the whistles, just so much customization that is available there. So if you really wanna control or create 
all these elements for your uh, content, for your video content, um, and that's very important to you, this is one point, but it might be worth more than that to you because Ecamm gives it to you, I mean, just so much customization. Files. I give the slight nod here to Riverside because of that really neat ability that they have built in there to create clips from your shows. I love that. Otherwise, they're all equal. But that small little feature um, is something related to their files and like file management and what you can do with them. I love it. So tip of the cap to Riverside on that one. Functionality, they all get a point because this is where they all can stream and they all you can just record, right? So both give you functionality of live streaming and or just recording. Cost, we have Ecamm coming in $20 a month, we have Riverside $19 a month, and we have StreamYard at $25 a month. So Riverside here gets the point. Slightly less than Ecamm. And as you saw when we went through this at the time I recorded this video, they were offering some discounts, things like that. I am sure that they will continually do that depending on when it is you're looking uh, to, to get one of these. So if we look at the final score, Ecamm, two points. Riverside, four points, and StreamYard, two points. So by these six categories, Riverside comes out on top. So my final thoughts on putting together this video, whenever I do these comparisons, to be completely honest with you, I do come in um, completely unbiased. None of these platforms have paid me specifically to promote them. And, and I designed this video to help those of you out there who are maybe creating a little bit of video or you want to be doing more video. So that's kind of the lens that I created uh, this video and the rating system. So yes, Riverside came out on top, but again, that does not mean that StreamYard is bad or Ecamm is bad, right? You are your own creator. And if you're just getting started, it probably makes a lot of sense to jump into a Riverside and then maybe gradually move up to a stream yard and then maybe graduate into Ecamm, right? You may find that if you jump right into Ecamm and you're not ready, you will be turned off and confused by the whole video creation process. Don't let perfection get in the way of production. That's something that I tell all of my clients. If you found this video helpful, informative in any way, be sure, please, I ask, use the links below in the description. As I mentioned, none of these platforms have paid me to promote them, but if you click those links in the description, they are affiliate links and they help support this channel and the videos I make. Also, I would love it if you are looking for more digital marketing and business growth videos, if you like this video and subscribe to the channel. So until next time, I encourage you to keep peddling.